Hello, today's mini lecture is on redistricting and reapportionment. You have a major assignment on redistricting called the redistricting game and uh, I thought I'd, I'd just explain some basic proponents of redistricting and reapportionment to you in this mini lecture. Here's the thing. Uh, the House of Representatives has four, 435 representatives. This is in Congress. Remember, we have a Senate and a House of Representatives. There are 100 members of the Senate, two per state, so there's no need for any districts in a state. Uh, even if you have a large state like Texas, we have two senators. A small state like Rhode Island has two senators. So districts aren't important. But in Texas, for the House of Representatives, for example, we have a very large population. And the representation in the House of Representatives for every state is based on population. And that's why we have the census every 10 years. In the census of 2010, it, it was revealed that Texas had grown tremendously in population. And about 89% of that growth is from Hispanic growth in population. We are so large now that we previously had 32 representatives, that was from the census of 2000, representing our large state, but because of this tremendous increase in growth in population, we are getting four new members in Congress to represent us in the House of Representatives, a total of 36 for our state. Now every state, remember, has at least one, so the real small states, Rhode Island, North Dakota, Alaska, for example, low in population have at least one. They will have one. We have 36. We are the second largest most populous state uh, in the country. Uh, California is the most populous and they have 53 uh, I believe in their uh, House of Representatives. Okay so 36. Now <clears throat> the total number is 435 in the House of Representatives. This means that if a state like Texas gets four additional ones, that means that somebody has to lose representatives. Now, we're seeing a phenomenon in our country where states that are getting more representatives, that are becoming more populous, are in this what they call the Sun Belt states. States like Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, all have gained in population and they've gotten new, new members. The states that are losing in population are losing members, are losing representation. That would be like New York, it would be like Ohio, it would be states in the what they call the snow belt or the rust belt up in the Midwest or the Northeast of the country where it's cold and people are moving out and coming more to the sun belt where we live. So the deal is too that each state then once they determine how many representatives they have, have to draw districts for their representatives to serve in. We have what we call single member districts. That means that there's one person elected to represent you in Congress from this district. So I thought I would show you how this works. And I'm going to draw my Texas districts. Here's Texas. Use your imagination. And we're going to have 36. Now previously we had 32. What happened was the state legislatures do this. They will draw 32 single member districts. That's what we had. If you're in an urban area like Dallas, you have very small geographical districts. If you're out in West Texas where very few people live, you have larger ge geographical districts but they all represent about the same number of people. And right now it's about 722,000 people per district. So out here, you know, you have to have a very large geographical area to get that many people. So all the districts are numerically equal. That's due to some court cases that occurred back in the 60s and 70s. And uh, we had single member districts. So each district has a number, district one, two, three, four, and each district elects one person to represent it. Okay, Now, the whole state is filled up with districts. There's no extra area. So if we go from 32 to 36, it means that the state legislature has to start over and has to redraw these district boundary lines so that somebody can run for Congress. So they start again and they do their districts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 36 for example. 
So you have every part of the state in some kind of district. Now that's for Congress. This is somebody to go to Washington, D.C. and be in the House of Representatives. So kind of let me fill up the state here with districts. Get the idea here. All right, everybody has a number, and we elect one person in each district to represent you in Congress. However, we have some extra representatives. In Texas, we have a House of Representatives in Austin and a Senate, a State Senate in Austin. In the State Senate, there are 31 members, and in the House of Representatives in Austin, there are 150. So let me use a different color here because the state legislature is also going to have to draw districts for 31 state senate districts. So as you can see, these may go beyond the line. So here's district 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 31. All of this whole state is filled with state senate districts as well. In addition, there are 150 little house districts in Austin, and so the state leg legislature is going to have to draw 150, 1, 2, 3, 150 little house districts as well. So when you do your assignment, who represents me, you're going to find that you are represented in the National Congress by two senators. That's the whole state. Then you're going to be represented in some numerical district, a congressional district, by somebody. And what is that district's number? It's, it, it's for a person to go to Washington and represent you in the House of Representatives. Then what is the state senate district you live in and who's your representative in Austin? And what house district do you live in and who is your representative that goes to Austin? So you're going to have to, that, that's why you have so many districts, so don't forget any of those in that assignment. It's very interesting to find out who represents you, what is their political party, and what do they believe in. Remember, they're your representative. You put them in office and you can take them out. Have a great day. We'll see you for the next mini lecture.